This is part 19 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss creating and throwing strongly typed SOAP files from a WCF service. This is continuation to part 18, so please watch part 18 before proceeding. In part 18 of this video series, we discussed throwing a generic SOAP fault using fault exception class. Instead of throwing a generic SOAP fault, we can create strongly typed SOAP faults and then throw them. Creating our own strongly typed SOAP faults allow us to include any additional custom information about the exception that has occurred. And there are three very simple steps to create a strongly typed SOAP fault. Let's look at those steps in detail. Step 1. Create a class that represents your SOAP fault. Decorate the class itself with data contract attribute and the properties within the class with data member attribute. In this example here, we are creating a class called divide by zero fault. This class is going to represent a strongly typed SOAP fault for divide by zero exception. And notice that the class itself is decorated with data contract attribute and the properties within the class are decorated with data member attribute. All right, to speed things up, I have already typed this code. So let's copy that code from the notepad Let's flip to Visual Studio and in the WCF service project, let's go ahead and add a class file and let's call this divide by zero fault dot CS and let's paste here the code that we have copied. So it's the same code that you have seen in the slide. Now this data contract and data member attributes are present in system.runtime.serialization namespace. All right, so that's the first step. Step two, in the service data contract, use fault contract attribute to specify that, you know, this operation contract is going to throw divide by zero fault. So for that association, by using the fault contract attribute and we do that within the service data contract. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So within this file I calculate a service.cs we have our service contract and within the service contract we have got one operation contract divide and you know we want to associate divide by zero fault with this operation contract and to do that we are going to make use of fault contract attribute and then we are going to specify type of our divide by zero fault. So basically this fault contract attribute is telling that this divide method can throw divide by zero fault. That's our step two. Step three, in the service implementation, create an instance of our strongly typed so fault and then throw it using fault exception class. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, you know, type in this code. So if you look at the service implementation itself here, within our calculator service.cs file, at the moment we are checking if denominator is zero and then we are throwing a generic fault exception. Instead of that, let's use try catch blocks. So let's use a try block. And then when we are you know, trying to divide uh, two numbers, if at all, if there is any exception, catch that. We know that if denominator is zero, it's going to throw divide by zero exception. So let's catch that exception. And then now we are going to create our divide by zero fault and let's call it. So basically we are creating an instance of divide by zero fault class. And then if you recollect, this class has got two properties within that. One is the error and the other one is details. Both of them are of type string. This error property is going to contain, you know, maybe the message that we want to display to the end user. And this details property can contain any custom information that we want to include. So let's populate both of those properties. Divide by zero fault dot error. Let's include the error as the message property from the exception object. 
and we have details property so here we can include any custom information that we want to include let's say for example denominator cannot be zero okay so at this point we have created an instance of our strongly typed so fault all that is left is to actually throw this um, you know fault exception and how do we do that using uh, fault exception class so to new fault exception of type divide by zero fault and then within the constructor we're going to pass the instance of the divide by zero fault that's it so at this point our service is actually throwing a strongly typed so fault right within our client application so before we make any changes to our client application you know we first need to run the service host so let's go ahead and run the WCF service itself so the service is running now let's flip to the client application since the service implementation has changed let's go ahead and update the service reference So basically, this should generate the definition for our strongly typed so fault as well. And then within here, instead of simply catching a generic fault exception, let's try to catch the strongly typed so fault, which is divide by zero. Now look at that, the IntelliSense doesn't bring divide by zero um, fault. That's basically because it's living in a different namespace that is in the calculator service namespace we have got divide by zero fault so now we are catching the strongly typed so fault okay and the instance name here is fault exception this fault exception object has got detail property and within that detail property notice that we have got the two properties that we have specified error and details so let's specify error and then details So fault exception dot detail dot details. All right. With this change, let's go ahead and run the client. So let's pass 10 and try to divide it by 0. Click divide. And we should be able to retrieve the error and details property of our strongly typed so fault. Look at that. That's the error. That's the value that is present in the error property, and that's the value that is present in the details property of this divide by zero fault exception that we are receiving. And this is the same piece of code that we have just looked at. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.